So this is a joint work with um, William Jotran Carlson and Alessandro Previvi. And you know, for the sake of time, I'll try to keep it um, a very high level. So I'm going to start with uh, some introductory material. So modern conciliation originally uh, originated from um, in explainable AI planning. So typically in explainable AI planning, we have of course a planning task, but also um, we have an agent and a human user, each of which have their own models of the planning task. And then according to these models, they generate plans, right? And then uh, if of course these plans are uh, consistent, then you know everything is fine. But if they're not, then there's a need for an explanation. So that's why it's called explainable AI planning. And some assumptions here are that the agent's model is assumed to be correct, like uh, the ground truth basically, and the human user is possibly wrong. So basically there are some you know, differences in the actions or the conditions of the actions, et cetera, in the human's model. And that's why they're inconsistent. Um, so the high level idea here is to reconcile these differences uh, between these two models such that um, uh, the human's plan from the updated human model is consistent with uh, the robot plan. So that's basically the model reconciliation. So now, uh, <clears throat> so now we have reformulated the, this uh, model reconciliation problem as a logic based um, uh, problem, right? So basically, uh, now the two models of the agent and the human will be represented as uh, knowledge bases, basically, basically encoding the, the, the planning task. And then um, the agent's plan will be uh, the query uh, in our case, which is entailed uh, by the agent's knowledge base, but not entailed uh, by the human's knowledge base. And the goal in our formulation is to find an explanation, which is a tuple, basically what we want to add to the human's knowledge base and what we want to remove if um, what we add is inconsistent with the knowledge base, such that uh, the query is uh, entailed when we update uh, uh, the knowledge base. So this is, this is the, the very high level idea of our um, uh, formulation. Now, of course, there are a plethora of research questions here from you know, how to compute effectively find an explanation, and then how to measure uh, the goodness of an explanation, how to convey the explanations, you know, and, and so on. But uh, in this uh, presentation, I will just briefly mention uh, the, uh, the first one, how to effectively find an explanation. So I'm gonna do this with the following uh, <clears throat> example. So imagine we have uh, a planning task uh, represented here as let's say a, a simple uh, a grid and we have the human's model and the robot's model, right? And the, the, uh, the dark gray cells uh, basically represent that the cells are blocked. So you cannot traverse uh, there. <clears throat> So then in this scenario, an explanation arises because the robot's model, as we see here, is um, inexplicable to, um, to, to, to the human user. Um, because also the robot uh, presents that, the plan, that this plan is the optimal plan. I forgot to say, I'm sorry. Um, and by optimal, I mean the minimum number of steps to reach uh, the goal state. <laughs> well, and of course, now to solve this in our case, where we, we basically, um, uh, model this uh, planning task as a as a sad uh, problem, as I'm sure all of you uh, uh, know. But just for the sake of completeness, I'm going to mention these things. So basically, we can encode all the, you know the, the locations, the starting locations, you know the blocked locations, the goal states of, of of the problem, and all the available actions that you can use uh, in the in the problem. And basically, now this here will be the knowledge base of the human. See here the uh, that the not blocked at B1. But now uh, uh, in the age of knowledge space, uh, B1 is blocked. So that's the difference. And of course, in uh, planning as, uh, as that, we want to find a, a truth value assignments to the sequence of actions such that the goal states are reached. And of course, there are a lot of efficient uh, self solvers nowadays to, to solve such problems. So <clears throat> a bit more details. So uh, let's say the human now has the plan to go you know, down, down, and uh, right, right, which results in, in, this, in, in the goal states, and the robot has a slightly longer plan than the human. And then the human asks the question, why uh, your plan instead of mine, right? And this basically would be the query in, in our uh, formulation, in our problem. And as I mentioned, we want to find what to remove from uh, the human's knowledge base and what to add, such as the query is entailed. And of course, in this trivial example, uh, what we remove is that uh, B1 is not blocked, and uh, what we add is that it's indeed blocked. 
Uh, and uh, uh, we have solved this using search-based methods. So we have a paper in triple AI and also uh, in using a logic programming uh, in Zelia. And this has, uh, was led by, by Son, <laughs> the, the logic programming one. Um, now, um, one of the um, underlying assumptions in uh, the modern oscillation in general, in our, our formulation, of course, is that uh, the human's model is um, deterministic. So, and what I mean by that is that the human's beliefs are Boolean. So either the human believes that you know a state exists or it doesn't, or an action exists or it doesn't. So it's zero and one. So what uh, the idea we had uh, in this paper, which we're still in this investigating, of course, is to assume a probabilistic uh, human model. Basically, now the human holds various, um, uh, let's say, subjective degrees of belief about the problem. So now it's not binary. It's not Boolean. <clears throat> so. Um, the, the main high level idea here is that to use uh, these uh, degrees of belief to generate more personalized and possibly convincing. And I say possibly because you know, we haven't done any uh, user studies to, to test that uh, yet. Um, um, yeah, to generate more personalized uh, explanations. <clears throat> so um, what I mean by degrees of belief uh, specifically, I mean um, the, the ability of the, basically to quantify the strengths of an agent's uh, belief attitudes. So uh, in other words, there are degrees of certainty about the truth of uh, propositions. Um, so basically zero will mean that we are absolutely certain in the falsity of the proposition, one in, in the truth, you know, 0 0.5 just as likely, you know, and so on. So this can be between zero um, and one. So now once we have these uh, degrees of belief, uh, we can, of course, we need to represent them and then reason with them. So, uh, to represent them, we can use uh, a probabilistic knowledge base. Uh, so very, very simple, simple, which consists of a set of formula and a belief function, function that assigns the degrees of belief to uh, each formula in the uh, in, in phi, such that of course they're between zero and one. And one thing to note here that I have to say is that uh, we have to make sure that the um, uh, the uh, the probabilities, basically the beliefs, are are consistent. Um, <clears throat> so now, given this. We, not, we can now compute uh, probabilities of arbitrary formulae uh, given, uh, given the probabilistic knowledge space. And basically how to do this, and how there, there has been many, many works to that, uh, you know, that they showed how to do that, is to convert the knowledge base into a weighted uh, CNF representation, and then basically use uh, weighted model counting to compute this, uh, this uh, prob the probability of, of, of psi, let's say, given the knowledge space. I'm not going to go into the details here. Uh, so now, given that, we can reformulate the um, exponential generation of our uh, problem as, as uh, to find an explanation for a query such that now that explanation increases the probability of the query in the updated human's uh, knowledge space. Right? So now, given this uh, definition of the problem, or basically, yeah, this definition is what we can call the probable um, explanation, right? So we can say that epsilon is a probable explanation if it increases the probability of the query in the updated human's uh, knowledge base. And other things we can explore here, of course, are to find the most probable you know, explanations or the bounded probable um, explanations. And basically the bounded probable explanations may be necessary because it's you know, uh, computing probabilities in that setting is, you know, it's a very hard problem. Uh, <clears throat> so now I'm going to try to to illustrate this with a, with a very simple example. Um, I hope to convey the message. So now ima imagine we have again, you know, a simple grid here, and we have, you know, these uh, the same starting locations. And now the gold state is uh, to go to C4 at some site, time, uh, time set, now, right? And the query, yeah, is that we want to go to how to reach basically the gold state. Now. <clears throat> Let's say that we have some degrees of belief uh, defined over the, the state literals uh, block cell, right? And now here you can see in the visual representation, or you can see that in the visual representation, basically uh, the white cells uh, say that uh, the cells are, are, you know, are, are not blocked. So we, we truly believe that. And either black, they say that we truly believe that they're blocked. Right, and then you know the, the, the gray and so on are you know, in values in between. <clears throat> so let's say we have now these uh, degrees of belief. Now, if and 
we assume that you know now that the QMR user doesn't know anything else. So we have to explain basically um, uh, the plans. So assume we have two explanations. So epsilon one is basically um, the plan that you have to go down, down, and then right, right, right. And epsilon two is the the explanation of the plan to go right, 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 and then down to to reach the goal state. So now, if we have uh, these things, um, of course, you can see that uh, epsilon one, if we update the human solid space, will be uh, the most probable one, right? And thus, that may be also the uh, you know the most um, convincing to um, uh, to a human user. So that's our main you know hypothesis and a motivation uh, uh, for, for this work uh, basically. <clears throat> So, uh, of course, as I said, this is an ongoing uh, work that, was, that we're still investigating. And the, the, um, the overall goal is to try to also approximate the human model, right? Because, yeah, I think I forgot to mention that one of the major assumptions in model reconciliation is that the agent knows uh, the human users a priori. And of course, that's, that's not a very realistic assumption to make. So we have to, you know, to, to relax that uh, and, mm, our idea, our idea of how to do that is basically through um, interactions. Um, so first, let's say uh, if we want to learn uh, the human's uh, beliefs, we may be able to do that through um, examples, right? So and, and there, there are some works there from the probability logic programming, uh, basically learning through interpretations. So maybe we can leverage some, some ideas from there to learn the, 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 the user, the degrees of belief of the user given what example they give uh, to the agent. And, or another idea there is to also have uh, a more iterative conversation uh, between the, the agent and, and uh, the, the, the human user, All right? So basically uh, the human user can ask uh, a question to the agent, then the agent can you know, respond back with an explanation, but then the user can also respond back uh, on that explanation, basically, uh, say that you know I don't I didn't understand a particular uh, detail of the explanation, or they can even you know contrast the explanation, right? And this process you know can go on until we basically uh, they're basically reconciled. They're the both you know in, in agreement. Let's say. <clears throat> so the ultimate goal uh, of, of of our work is to to enable a more you know collaborative human agent teams, human agent uh, team basically to enable agents to work with humans to solve problems where neither agents nor humans can solve uh, individually, right? And I believe this is my very short presentation. 